Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial, we are going to be taking a look at color balancing a clip inside of DaVinci Resolve using our scopes. So, here we have this clip that looks kind of green and not really super balanced. And over here, we've got our scopes. So if you need to bring those up, right click, show scopes, you got them. Here I have it in a 4-up display, just so we can take a look at what all the different ones are doing. I'm mainly going to be using this parade and the histogram. But if you want to use your waveform and vector scope, go right ahead. So the first thing I'm going to do to start correcting this shot is not color balancing at all, but I just want to straighten it out some. So this was shot at 4K, so we've got some room to scale around probably. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate it until it looks more or less correct. So perfect. And then zoom it in so we don't have any black stuff around there. And then tilt it a little bit, pan it a little bit. And there we go. That's looking much better already. All right, so now we're going to get into the fun part, color balancing this guy. That didn't take super long. I like to do my sort of more detailed color balancing thing inside of our primaries bars, which you see primary wheels. Primary bars right here, beautiful, under this color wheel section. And now we've got our lift gamma gain. Lift is your dark stuff, so these blacks in the lower part of your scopes here. So down here is the lift section where that's going to be controlling. The gamma is the middle, so the middle of your histogram and the middle of your parade right there. And then gain is the top and the top. And then you've got your offset, which sort of just moves the whole thing. So if you take a look at our blue channel here, changing the offset just sort of scoots it around, which is pretty cool. And it can be super handy. So the first thing I'm going to do is see that our red and our green are pretty much matched up, but our blue is kind of smushed down here, and that is happening in the middle. So since this is in the middle, I'm going to go to our gamma and push this up. And you'll see as we push this up, it's bringing up our lift some. See this little bump in the shadows. So we will correct that next. And color balancing is just a lot of pushing and pulling. So push that up and then pull the lift back down some. And push this back up a little bit. And pull this back down. And now we're looking pretty good. Pull it back down. And a little more. So... I'd say that is pretty neutral looking. You see before and after as a much cleaner, more professional look. The skin looks a little magenta though. So what we do is we add more green in for magenta because green is the opposite of magenta. Since we did sort of add some in because this shot was a little green. So just play around. And once you get it balanced with your scopes, you kind of do like what I'm doing and go by eye and see what's sort of bothering you. Now that our colors are balanced, you know, you can also worry about getting your luminance value balanced. And I kind of like this sort of flat, washed out look for this. So I keep like this. Something to avoid. Lots of times you'll see amateur, terrible colorists. They'll watch an old school video and they'll say everything, your black should always be at zero and your white should always be at 1023 or 1024, whatever. Or 256 if you're an 8-bit monitoring. 255. But that is not always correct, because you can see we can crunch this down. And, you know, this is technically more correct, but look how bad that looks. That looks like dick. So, grading this, I might bring the gamma down a little bit and then bring the gain back up and just sort of make a little bit more of a difference there so we get some detail. Actually, let me do that in a different node. So I'm going to add a node, and I will go ahead and since being organized. I'm not really sure if you should do the luma or color first. Uh, I'm sure some people will say some way and some people will say the other way. I tend to do color first for no particular reason. Sometimes I'll do luminance first. Just depends on what the shot needs more. This shot needed more color work than it needed sort of luminance stuff. But get this in here and we're looking pretty good there. I'm liking that so you can see before our luminance, after. We aren't really changing much. We're just sort of sort of expanding out the contrast in the middle, but our sort of actual range of the image is about the same. You can see with our color before and after, we are kind of changing a lot, really making it look not bad. And since I'm having a good time and we're talking about correcting images, we see it gets kind of nasty in here and noisy. So add another node and we'll call this noise. And you could reduce noise in the whole image. That's totally fine but that's sort of the cop-out noob way of doing it. And we, here at Meester Media, 
are not cop out noobs. We are hardcore, hardcore, just in general, everything, riding motorcycles, etc. So, so I've got my qualifier selected that I'm going to hit shift eight so we can see just what we're selecting. And looks like we're getting close there. Everything there. I don't care about this. I don't care about that. So we're just getting our sort of lower parts of the image. I'm going to bring the high down some. So you can see we're just selecting our, our darkest parts of the image. This is where the noise is going to show up the most. So just blur this out a little bit so it isn't super hard. You don't need a super blurry mat for this. Then, uh, if you don't have the Pro or Studio version, you just want to be sneaky about it. You can make a little bit nicer selection than I've done and go to your Blur tab and just blur it a little bit. But then you lose some detail. But, you know, trading off. And you can also reduce the saturation some because color noise. So let's see how that looks. See before and after. You see it gets blurry, but it's definitely not noisy anymore. So we'll call this noise cheap. Oh, goodness. Is it 2Es or EA? I don't care. And then in this next new node, I will alt drag from there. Control D, disable that node. Now in this one, we are going to reset our blur and our saturation. Bare temporal noise reduction, three frames, better. Nice, and that's some nice looking noise reduction. Now the rest of our image that is not noisy, is nice and sharp. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's not the sexiest thing in the world, but it is darn handy and it's sort of more indicative of real color work than all the sort of crazy looks that we make. So if you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more exciting stuff like this, be sure to subscribe to the Mason Media YouTube channel. It is fantastic and excellent and wonderful. And if you want even more goodness, go to MeesternMedia.com slash products. Check out the House Let's Pack and the Bright Light Slight Leak Pack, both of which make life easier. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends because if you have friends that do video stuff, they probably need to know how to color balance their shots. Or at least they need to know that you know how to do it now. So once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.